The next thing we're going to try to take off is the rear bumper. There are four screws on each side. They take a 3 8 size socket deep. I think you'll be able to get on a quarter inch ratchet and get it, those off. Those don't look like they'll be too hard. Then, up at the top, there are there are nine screws that go into this backing plate here that holds the bumper on and those appear to be with seven millimeter due to this slip you can't get a ratchet in there so it's going to be a long painstaking process to take those off another thing you'll have to take off is the vent line from the fuel tank that's a half inch socket and of course we'll have to disconnect all the lights there is a license plate light and of course the tail lights they just come off by twisting them and pulling them out so those won't be hard then there are some wires that are held up with brackets on the back here those will be easy to take off some of them look like they're already off Someone's been in here helping me out. So, after that, on the bottom of the outside of the bumper, there are another couple of screws that need to be taken out. Those look to be maybe a 5 16 After that, hopefully the skin will come off and we'll be able to go from there. Okay, the screws on the bottom of the bumper here turned out to be quarter inch. They shouldn't be any problem to take out. And it looks like it's going to be easier to take the license plate light out using a Phillips screwdriver from here rather than disconnecting the socket from the inside. It's pretty slim clearance in there, so I'm going to take the light out. Here's some pretty good proof that fluorescent light bulbs are the way to go in your trouble light. I just dropped this and the whole bulb broke and it's still still shining. Any regular incandescent bulb, that bulb would have been burnt out. I snapped that bulb back together, put it in its base and it's good to go. Okay, I've got all the screws out. Uh, turned out not to be too bad up there because it's a relatively new backing plate and once I got them loose I was able to take them out by hand. Got all the bulbs out. The backup light I ended up loosening one of the screws um, I mean the license plate light. I ended up loosening one of the screws Shifting a little bit gave me room to disconnect the bulb, pull it out of the socket. The other screw was giving me a problem, so I'm not going to hassle with it. I've got all of the lights out, all of the screws, except for one that's... One that's right up here. It's the last one holding it on. I'm going to go remove it. Turns out the skin is what's going to come off. And I didn't have to loosen some of the wires that are attached to the frame and the vent for the gas tank because so, they're going to stay on at this point. Okay, I'm going to get the one last screw and we're going to take the bumper skin off.
Okay, the one screw over there broke and it's not coming off as easily as I thought, so I'm going to have to persuade that off. Okay, with a little persuasion that came off and the bumper is off. One of the things I decided to do on this project was wherever possible, I'm going to take the original screws that came from any given piece and I'm going to put it back in where it belongs so that I don't have to have a huge catalog system and a bunch of uh, bags of nuts and bolts laying around that I, I wonder where they came from. On these screws that were holding the bumper on, what I did was I backed them off slowly and then turned them back on to clear the threads of any debris and did that several times to get each one. I got a little brave on one of them and it was actually the last one and it snapped off the pop weld to the backing piece here in the back so now I have to take a little bit of epoxy put it on there so that it's okay when I snug it on when I replace it. Now that the bumper skin is off we've got to make sure that there's nothing in the way of the bit connection between the body and the frame when we do the lift so I'm gonna to have to take off the uh, fuel gauge wires which are then run over they connect to the license plate light they go through this bracket so it's going to have to be removed from there and then it runs up around is bolted to the frame there so that's got to be taken off and it's got to be moved on top of the frame and then it goes back into the body into the main uh, bundle of wires in the body Another thing we're going to have to do is there's an aftermarket alarm system on here and unfortunately those wires go up and into the frame. So we're going to have to take those and run them back till they're no longer connected to the frame. Nothing can be connected to both the frame and the body when we do the lift. The other piece we've got to take care of here is the vent for the gas tank. That also is connected. Uh, no, that's going to stay on the frame. So we don't have to do that at this point. Okay, well, okay we've got the wiring harness from the fuel tank sending unit. And there's the license plate light. We've got it. separated from the frame and that except for right up here where it's bolted to the frame and there's also a ground wire from the antenna and attached to that grounding point is a ground wire that comes out of the wiring harness so we're going to have to make sure we get that connected whenever we put it back together those are both 3 8 inch uh, bolts so it will help you out with the selection. What I've done here is I've separated the wiring chassis or the wiring harness from the chassis and I've used zip ties to hold it up with the body so that nothing can get caught whenever I separate the body from the frame. So everything looks good in the back end. I think it's time to move a little bit forward.